live from KSAT 12. The news at noon starts right now. Viva Fiesta, the party with a purpose just hours from taking off. Yeah, we're hoping it does not rain on our parade or in this case, Fiesta Fiesta. We are keeping an eye on the weather and rain potential. So, Justin, do you have some good news for this evening? Yes. Yes, I, we do have a chance for storms, yes, but I think it's going to be away from San Antonio. I mean, there's always a small chance that some of these storms could drift in our direction, but I honestly think uh, Fiesta Fiesta should go off without a hitch. Let me show you the forecast. I will tell you, though, it is going to be warm, 89 around 4 o'clock, but a heat index, yes, a heat index. We have to talk about that now uh, because the humidity is so high. Heat indices could be 90 plus. 7 o'clock and 10 o'clock, we are going to add in a very small chance of a storm. Uh, but if one pops up, we'll let you know. I would say go ahead, go enjoy yourself uh, with the uh, idea in mind that we're probably going to avoid any rain, at least today. Uh, 87 to 7 o'clock, 74 at 10 o'clock. There's like the satellite picture. We're still waiting on these clouds to kind of burn off. If you're in eastern Bear County, the sun is out. Temperatures have popped up to 80, but the cloud deck holding, at least for the moment, 75 in Kerrville, cloudy there, 78 in Hondo, cloudy for you, with clearing skies for places like Gonzales and Kennedy and around Bear County, anywhere from the mid-70s up in Holotus to the low 80s, where the sun is trying to peek through the clouds there at Stinson and Randolph. Weather headlines with a bug included <laughs> uh, threat uh, for any storm today. Again, that's going to be mainly in the hill country will be hail and gusty winds. And uh, we do have a front headed our way, so that means some cooler weather for the weekend and still some good rain chances with our best odds Saturday night. We're going to go through it uh, all the timeline there for the rain potential coming up here in just a couple minutes. Guys. Yes, sir. It is called Fiesta, also known as a party with a purpose. It lasts 11 days full of parades, carnivals and lots of food and it all gets started today. Tiffany Werktus takes us to where the party begins. The Alamo Dome's HEB Plaza Fiesta Fiesta taking place there late this afternoon and it is going to be the place to be for fashion too. Viva Fiesta! It's Fiesta time, and that means flower crowns, medals, and more medals. And my other favorite medal is our official poster medal for this year. You will also see bright Fiesta gear and even chicken on a stick earrings. I bought them off another vendor that she had. I just had to have them. San Antonio resident Yolanda Vidal is ready to celebrate. We caught up with her this morning as she was setting up her tent for today's Fiesta Fiesta event taking place at the Alamo Dome's ATB Plaza. What do you love most about Fiesta? The colors, the people, everybody having a great time, the music. And there will be plenty of all of that here. You can also catch the carnival for exciting rides and a variety of food this fiesta season. Well, it's just amazing how great the city of San Antonio comes together, parties, fiesta for all is our celebration this year. It's our, it's our motto this year. And we, really, we want to invite the entire city to join in this fiesta celebration. And if you are looking for something bright to wear for fiesta events, check out the vendors like Chasing Camila that sells cropped guayaberas. I love being at Fiesta. I am honored to be at the first at the kick up for Fiesta. Fiesta Fiesta starts at 4 p.m. to 11 p.m. Viva Fiesta! Fiesta! <laughs> Tiffany Huertas, KSAT 12 News. Fiesta Fiesta might be the big show today. It's not the only event today, though. There's also the taste of the North Side and Taste of the Republic. And right now on KZ.com, all things Fiesta, including your guide to all the fun events taking over our entire city over the next several days. And just take a look at this. Everything you need to know on this page, including a complete list of the day's events for Fiesta 2024. That's and, our website. And a rundown of all our live coverage, because of course, we are your official Fiesta station, so we're gonna be bringing you live coverage from all the biggest Fiesta events going on starting tonight. And while you're on KSAT.com, don't forget to grab your tickets to our parade parties for both the Battle of Flowers Parade and Fiesta Flambeau. Uh, everyone is invited to get a seat at our private party alongside the parades with food and fun and drinks and 
bathrooms. <laughs> you can scan the QR code on the bottom of your screen right now for more details on how to purchase your tickets and get a front row seat to the parades. Not everything is fiesta today. There's a job fair going on. SeaWorld and Aquatica are hiring hundreds of people. Both parks have spring and year-round positions. They include park operations, merchandise, food service, security, lifeguards, ride operators, entertainment, and there's more. Apply before the job fair at SeaWorldJobs.com to fast track applications and select a convenient time to interview or just walk in and apply on the spot. The hiring event is from 3 to 7 today and it continues tomorrow and it's on Saturday as well. She said, I did not starve him. That's a quote from Miranda Casares. She told a jury that this morning as she took the stand during her punishment phase, the jury taking only about an hour to find her guilty of starving her stepson, Benjamin Savetta, to death back in 2021. Erica Hernandez is joining us live at the courthouse with more on her testimony. So Erica, was the testimony believable? You know, David and Ursula, time and time again, Gasset uh, is on the stand and she's not taking any responsibility for her actions, even though the jury has found her guilty. She is putting all the blame on Benjamin's father, Brandon Savera, who is also charged in this case. Now, during cross-examination, she said bruising on Benjamin was caused by his father and that she never favored any of the kids and she didn't do the things Benjamin's brother claimed she did. Even during questioning about a text message she sent her mom complaining about Benjamin she and saying quote this kid needs a good one end quote she claimed to not send the message what did you mean by he needs a good one Brandon would make me say things why would you send this to your mom he would force me to do things Now, Casares is facing up to life in prison. It will be up to the jury to decide on how much time she will be spending in prison. Now, the punishment phase testimony is still not over it yet. It is still ongoing. We could hear back by this afternoon, possibly, if they will be deliberating on sentencing. So stay with Case at 12 for the latest on that. David and Ursula. Thank you, Erica. A man that barricaded himself inside a local hotel is arrested after several hours. It caused a lot of problems for the residents there and the people who work near the medical center who use Fredericksburg Road near Louis Pasteur. Patty Santos there on the scene where some tense moments unfolded. After more than four hours, San Antonio police were able to get that barricaded man out safely without anyone getting hurt. It all started in the Studio 6 extended stay on Fredericksburg Road. Police say a security man noticed the suspect walking in the complex. Police say the man then fired several shots at the officers, up to five shots possibly. He then threatened one of the residents of the hotel and barricaded himself inside their room. The male was wearing a mask and it appeared that he had a he had a gun or had a weapon of some kind. So that security guard called police just after just before 5:30. Everyone was able to get out safely before the SWAT team arrived. Now it did cause a lot of problems for people who have doctor's appointments and even those who were trying to get to work here near the medical center. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. Just in the last few minutes, by the way, the San Antonio Police Department identified the suspect who was barricaded. Officers had taken him into custody. His name is Johnny Munoz. He is 42 years old. And we have new details this noon about a man who died in a crash with a dump truck. It happened Tuesday morning. The Bear County Medical Examiner's Office has identified him as 35-year-old Kevin Robles. He died at the scene of that crash on Highway 16 near Highway 211 in northwest Bear County. Bear County Sheriff's Office deputies said a dump truck traveling north on Highway 16 lost control and crashed into that Chevrolet Silverado Robles was driving. The driver in the dump truck was taken to the hospital with a head injury. A woman already facing theft charges for taking money for cemetery headstones that she allegedly never delivered, being charged yet again. Weeks ago, we told you about Elena Moreno, who is a headstone business owner in San Antonio. Twelve people told Case at 12 that they gave her money for the headstones. Now Moreno is under arrest again, charged with stealing $42,000 from a combined 15 alleged victims. That's a second degree felony. She has since bonded out of jail. We've been following this story for months now. We have several articles about Moreno 
and the cemetery headstones on our website right now. Coming up, new details about 9-11 outages, that 9 -1 -1 outages that affect the customers in several states, including here in Texas, what may have caused some of those outages. We are learning more about 911 outages in several states this noon. At least some of them may have been caused by a company that was installing a light pole. The utility Lumen says some of its customers in Nevada, South Dakota and Nebraska experienced an outage due to a third party company that was installing the light pole. It says the issue was fixed in a couple of hours last night, but in the meantime, there were also issues here in Texas, including in Del Rio and Kilgore. That's east of Dallas. Both cell and landlines were impacted. Not quite clear what caused the issues in Texas or if it's related to yet another problem in other states. CNN reporting that the city of Del Rio said their issue is with the carrier and not with the city's system. We've reached out to officials in Del Rio. We want to learn more about this problem. We have not yet heard back. Outside with live cam, 80 degrees, a little humid, going to get even more humid. It's going to get a little hotter, but here's the deal doesn't look like Fiesta Fiesta is going to get wet. Does not look that way. We can completely 100% guarantee that as some storms may develop out to our west today. But I think for the most part, Fiesta Fiesta will be great. Just know it's going to be a little toasty with temperatures in the 80s. And yes, lots of humidity out there. The aquifer is down four tenths per foot, 637.9. And your pollen count, everything is low. Oak is down to 20. I think we can pretty much say the season is done and we're thankful for that. Uh, let's take a look at the weekend forecast and your seven day forecast. We'll do that coming up. I've held back my excitement for Fiesta Fiesta tonight, waiting for the weather report. Now, yeah, well, now. you really got to make a lot of people happy today, Justin, if you can make good on that. Don't think anything's going to happen during Fiesta Fiesta. Correct. And I think a lot of the activity, if we see some today, is going to be to our north and to our west. Now, it's possible that some, works. Of the, some of those storms can drift towards San Antonio later tonight, but most of Fiesta Fiesta is going to be just fine. And as I said, it's, it's going to be warm. That's the other side to all this. We're still forecasting a high right around 90. Now, the last couple of days, temperatures haven't warmed up all that much because the cloud cover is held. In this case, we're already starting to see a few breaks, especially across eastern Bear County. So it looks like it'll be a, a warmer today than the last couple of days just for that reason alone. And you see the uh, cloud cover it will hold down temperatures for a little while, especially out to the west. Uh, but as we go forward in time and those clouds shrink and the sun pops out, we'll get temperatures up near 90 this afternoon. I think we'll see quite a few 90s, uh, especially uh, down to the south and west, places like Carrizo Springs, Pearsall. Uh, and, you know, with a temperature of 90 and the humidity that we have, heat indices could be as high as 93, 94 here in San Antonio. So just use some caution if you're going to be outside for, you know, a long period of time. Those temperatures aren't too bad, but, you know, we're just getting used to this whole heat index thing. <laughs> we're getting back into the swing of it. 80 degrees right now, cloudy skies. Dew point is at 71. South, southeasterly winds at about 11 miles per hour, and it's still overcast as we look out over the airport. But you get into eastern parts of Bear County, yeah, the sun's out. These clouds are starting to break up here, and I think we'll continue to see that trend slowly but surely with a little more sun this afternoon. Now the clouds are thicker as you get into the hill country, Lake E, Kerrville, Bandera, over towards Hondo. So we'll take more time there. And it's always tricky with these little clouds. They kind of have a mind of their own. The pattern that they take on as far as, you know, breaking up and going away. But uh, the overall idea is that, yes, we will see some more sun today. And I'll point out, you see that boundary right there? That's a cold front. And that's going to make a difference today, too. So this front, is going to set up there across North Texas, and then there will be a, a dry line that sets up off to our west. This uh, yellow color, this darker yellow color, is where the highest risk of severe weather will be today, according to the Storm Prediction Center. And as we zoom a little bit closer, for our area, it's the hill country that has the highest risk of seeing some storms. But this lighter yellow means there is a small chance uh, that a severe storm could pop up. And let me show you the forecast. So this is 4 o'clock. There's not much going on. Of course, Fiesta, Fiesta getting underway at this point. Uh, but as we head towards 9 o'clock, it does show 
couple showers and storms developing along the dry line and then along that front as well. And then these storms kind of trying to drift south towards maybe Kerrville or Lakey before they fall apart. Then this front sinks down into our area tomorrow, cools us down a little bit. Doesn't bring us a lot of rain necessarily on your Friday, but as we get into Saturday with some disturbances moving in from the west and you've got a stationary boundary, that means our rain chances go up some. And I think the, the better rain chances will hold off until late on Saturday. This is 4 o'clock Saturday afternoon. It shows some thunderstorms starting to develop. And then by Saturday night, this is when our best odds at seeing some rain start to uh, develop. And uh, overnight into very early Sunday morning, we could see some showers and storms, some pockets of heavy rain in spots. But by Sunday morning, a lot of this is out of here. So our weekend rain chances, if you're planning out your weekend, Friday evening, small chance, Saturday morning, small chance, maybe a little bit of drizzle. And then Saturday afternoon, we start to bring the rain chances up, and it's Saturday night where our rain chances are at their highest. How much rain could we see? Half an inch to an inch. I think especially in the hill country, we could see a little bit more than that. Maybe up to two inches in some spots, and those are areas that certainly need the rain. So this could be a really good situation for us. 80 on Friday, 77 Saturday. You see the rain chances jumping up there. And then after the front, 69 on Sunday, beautiful weather. Low humidity, 76, partly cloudy on Monday for the River Parade. Guys. Ooh, look at that River Parade weather. Nice. No questions there. Nice. SA Live has a question for us now. Okay. I'm, I'm questioning why, David, you and Myra get all the great weather for the River Parade. We're going to be in the humidity. Yeah. But no I rain blame tonight. Him so. too. Yeah. Yes, so I know. Okay, so with all that in mind, we want to know what's in your Fiesta survival kit. What's the most important thing yeah. in your Fiesta survival kit? Ursula. Um, a, uh, one of those uh, power packs for my phone. Oh, yeah. good idea, yes. Because it, it feels like when you're in these big crowds, your phone just drains yep. of it everything. Does. And in our business, we gotta have our phones working, so. Yes, indeed. Yeah. What about you, David? Uh, money for food. Oh, uh, yeah, good idea. <laughs> Because yeah, you got to have Cash chicken on, on a stick and a sausage yeah. wrap and all that yeah. stuff. So, okay. yeah. Um, for me, it's him. Okay. Oh, that's that two days is in my most stuff. important thing in my Fiesta survival oh, kit. And also because he well, carries this around. This. Ooh. This is Ooh. the, look, and it's labeled with his name, of course. Okay. <laughs> the case just in case. And it is perfect for holding my car keys, cell phone, little makeup, <laughs> lipstick, I love it. things like that. Yeah. Is that it's a cassette perfect. tape on the and top? And he carries it, which is the best part of all. I do. <laughs> it's, it's here. It's got little. It's got stuff in it, like highlighters, scissors, and you know, yeah. just well, the, that's where you the put necessities your, your for your little power for pack hosts. in there too. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! That's nice. Okay. Oh, and I forgot one more thing. Confetti cannon. You can there put you that go. in there too. Okay. Oh, yeah. we're not going to do it right now. I, I don't Come think on. so. Come on. Okay. Let it go, Mike. I think we're should I? Yeah, Ooh. of course you should. Yes, to. How do you do it? This way? Oh, my gosh. Oh, I, oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I did not think you were really going to well, do that. Did you get that, Ted? <laughs> I can't hear out of this ear now. What? <laughs> exactly. Uh, okay, now it's official. We got a Cut ton of things. It's all Fiesta <laughs> on the show today. Scan that QR code. What's the most important thing on your uh, in your Fiesta survival kit down here at beautiful historic Market Square? I it's need a be broom. Buzzing next week. I need a broom. Uh oh, add that to your kit. Yes, the first day of Fiesta. Time to party, San Antonio. What you need to know is you head out the door. Coming up later. that we'll be offering the park and ride with Via. Very affordable, convenient for $1.30 each way. Go to one of our park and rides. We'll be offering at three of our park and rides, including the Stone Oak, Randolph, and the Crossroads locations. Via once again encouraging everybody to take advantage of their park and ride service this Fiesta season. And as an added bonus, riders can also get a free Via Fiesta medal while supplies last. Children younger than five can ride for free and there are discounts available for some people. If you have any questions, you can call the number on your screen 210-362-2020 or visit viainfo.net. Yes, we have spirit, Fiesta spirit, how about you? My hat that my friend made for me this year. That hat lights up too, right? It does light no. up. So that's yes. a good battle of flowers or flambeau yeah, hat. That's right, and wow. I, we wanna see 
your Fiesta hats, too. We have a whole list of events that VIA is offering its park and ride services for, and um, a lot of the really big ones are on the list. Yeah, here they are. Oyster Bake, Taste of New Orleans, Texas Cavaliers River Parade coming up Monday, Niosa, Battle of Flowers, King William Fair, and Fiesta Flambeau. So take advantage of VIA. Of, and this isn't the only option if you're looking to have a safe ride to and from your favorite Fiesta event. Uber also offering people discounts. Passengers can use the code VIVA2024. They get a $10 ride credit. We also have a link on kset.com to score that freebie. The offer available starting at 2 this afternoon until 2 a.m. on Monday, April 29th. And don't forget to share your first pictures with us. We love seeing your colorful outfits, your great hats like Ursula has, and creative decorations, and of course, those hats, like we said. Got to have look at look at some of those things. Yours is almost as tall as that. Well, my friend, is good. my friend made made this for me, nice. um, and and he always comes up with something crazy, and he'll be out at Fiesta Fiesta tonight too. You can't miss him. I think Niosa is one of the places you can go and find some of the craziest hats you've ever seen in your life out there. But it's all in fun. It's all celebration. Mm -hmm. And you know, it's real humid outside, so it's going to be a really bad oh, hair yeah. day. There you go. There you go. Perfect. Done. Fixed. All right, still coming up. The Brahmas hit with injuries, but now a local guy has his opportunity to show what he can do. New today at five, they are a must-have for Fiesta, aside from their hat. Those shiny, colorful, flashy Fiesta medals. But one hospital is alerting patients that some medals do have tiny batteries in them, and that could be dangerous to small children. Coming up, what parents should look for to keep safe, it's Today at 5 after Entertainment Tonight. Looking outside with live cam, kind of dismal out there, but if the rain can hold off for Fiesta Fiesta, we will all be very, very happy. Uh, weather doesn't seem to be much of an issue right now, but traffic is an issue. Yeah, we're going to start with traffic real quick uh, because up in Kirk County, you've, you heard RJ probably talk about this most of the morning. Uh, the eastbound lanes of Interstate 10 are shut down, really from Kerrville all the way to Comfort. So this is a long stretch here. But uh, the DPS just tweeted this out, that the accident is at mile marker 512 in Kerr County. Both eastbound lanes have been shut down, beginning at the 508 mile marker. And they're still trying to get this cleaned up. We were told that it was an 18-wheeler with oranges, and they're trying to get that uh, uh, I guess the, uh, the oranges and then the accident itself off the road. But you see the trans guide sign there uh, calling for long delays. And uh, what is happening here, and I'll take you up to Kerrville, is that this entire stretch right here is shut down. So they are rerouting people through Center Point and back over to Comfort. So if you know anyone who's headed into San Antonio inbound on Interstate 10, there are going to be long delays and there are some backups right near the city of Kerrville because of that. All right, let's switch gears and talk about our forecast. 85 degrees at 2 o'clock today. We'll start to see the clouds clear out a little bit this afternoon, and we'll get up near 90 degrees. That's going to feel more like 92 or 93 when you factor in that humidity. And yes, we have some chances, small chances, of some thunderstorms in the air. But that mainly is for the hill country and folks out west. I think Fiesta Fiesta will be just fine if you can deal with a little bit of heat. We do have more rain chances, though, for the weekend and some better chances coming up Saturday night. We'll discuss that forecast for you coming up in just a couple minutes. Thank you, Justin. A signature of San Antonio's downtown streets since 1865 may be sidelined by City Council, a potential ban being discussed that would rein in the carriage horse business. Council members are raising concerns that range from animal welfare to safety. Reporter Garrett Berger with why the carriage operators say they've got answers to the concerns, but no one's asking them. My horses go home every day, so they have pasture time every day. Stephanie Garcia owns two of the five carriage companies in San Antonio, small businesses that revolve around their biggest employees. So, yeah, as you can see, they just come straight for attention. They just love all the loving. But the future of those carriage companies is in question. Back in November 22, a pair of council members proposed a horse-drawn carriage ban an idea that's only now making its way to the committee process. I'll admit I thought the request had been killed, but I'm always down for a surprise. 16 months ago, the proposal was for a total ban. But Wednesday, one of the sponsors, Jalen McKee Rodriguez, suggested moving the carriages to parks or somewhere else off the streets 
could also be acceptable. Many people romanticize the idea of horse-drawn carriages in San Antonio, but the reality is that they don't belong in our city streets, especially not downtown. Band supporters argue it's an issue of animal welfare and safety on the increasingly crowded downtown streets. I can't be a city council person that in good faith says, you know what, let's just keep doing it the way we've always done and risk viral videos of horses dropping dead downtown. But carriage company operators say the city hasn't made an effort to engage them. Once again, we're trying to be brushed under the rug and have changes made without bringing it to a discussion like we were promised eight, 16 months ago. Wednesday's meeting doesn't do anything more than kick the issue to a new committee. The specifics of any potential ban would still need to be worked out. What are your feelings about the process moving forward and what you think is going to happen? I'm hoping that they're going to come to the table and sit down and discuss things with us and speak to our experts, our vets, or the, the animal care services and see how we work. We can't just move on and ignore what we're saying and our views. Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. The jury selection process in former President Donald Trump's New York criminal trial still moving forward, sort of. One juror who was chosen earlier this week has been excused today. So now there are six jurors seated. Twelve more, including alternates, need to be chosen. Only then can opening statements begin. Each side has already used six of their ten preemptory challenges, which eliminates a prospective juror for just about any reason. Each side has additional challenges, though, for seating alternate jurors. The process could finish later this week. Once they're out of their peremptory challenges, right, once each side can no longer just dismiss a juror for any reason apart from race, then the fights start over whether and why jurors should be dismissed. President Trump is facing 34 felony charges accused of hiding what the government claims was a campaign expense hiding a relationship with an adult film actress before the 2016 election. He says instead it was a general legal expense and denies there was ever an affair with Stormy Daniels. Federal law enforcement is on alert for any potential threats to the U.S. Jewish community ahead of the start of the Passover holiday on Monday. Speaking to a group of nationwide security officials, FBI Director Christopher Wray said the FBI remains concerned lone actors could target large gatherings, high-profile events, or symbolic or religious locations for violence. Wray warned the FBI has observed homegrown violence, a surge in hoax threats against Jewish facilities, and a range of threats from abroad. The Texas Lutheran softball team is on a 15-game winning streak while the team says they are so successful right now. We're standing at the corner of Brooklyn and North St. Mary's and we're in the bleachers and you know what that means. It is Fiesta Parade time. This year's Battle of Flowers Parade and the Fiesta Flambeau will start near San Antonio College and wind all the way to near West Martin Street, but there are going to be a lot of closures in between. Here's what you need to know. The route for the parades is 2.6 miles long and will go down North Main Avenue to Lexington and the corner of St. Mary's and Brooklyn. It will then head towards Alamo Plaza, Commerce Street, go past San Fernando Cathedral and wind down at Santa Rosa at West Martin. And you can expect these closures early Friday morning through the afternoon for Battle of Flowers and then early evening to late Saturday night for Flambeau. For more information on all things Fiesta, including how you can get to a ticket to our KSAT Insider Parties for the Battle of Flowers and the Fiesta Flambeau Parades, all you got to do is head over to KSAT.com slash Fiesta. Viva Fiesta! And if you don't want to sit next to RJ as the official Fiesta station, KSAT is going to be broadcasting all the big parades. That's right. And while we can't wait to share all of the fun and excitement with you, it does mean that some of your favorite ABC programs might be shown at a different time than you're used to. Most of your shows will still air on KSAT, but you may need to adjust your DVR for a different airtime. 911 episodes from Thursday, April 18th, that's today, both our repeat episodes, by the way, are going to be rebroadcast on KSAT at 2 in the morning on uh, tomorrow morning. Then tomorrow, April 19th, and at 2 a.m. on Saturday morning, April 20th, Monday's American Idol, as well as a special edition of 2020, will also be rebroadcast at different times. You can find that information on KSAT.com, as well as other programming notes, including when and where you can catch the NFL draft and the first round of the NBA playoffs.
And we should mention that our KSAT parties, parade parties that we're going to be showing, um, everybody's invited to get a ticket. It's You don't have to be an insider to get them. Very true. Got a problem over here. We do. I just found this on TransKite, guys. Looks like we have a truck fire going on. This is at 410 and Ingram. And uh, it looks like it was in the bed of the truck. The fire truck just pulled up to uh, try to uh, get this fire under control. But you're seeing some thick black smoke. This is definitely going to cause some slowdowns, even though it's on the shoulder. But it's going to cause some slowdowns there at 410 and, and Ingram Road. This uh, train sky has been busy today. A lot going on. And as we said earlier, I-10 inbound from Kerrville to Comfort closed due to an 18-wheeler rollover. We've got more on the forecast, including your Fiesta Fiesta forecast coming up. It's time for a Fiesta History Trivia Moment, powered by your local San Antonio area Chevy dealers. The inaugural Battle of Flowers Parade was put on to honor which event in Texas history? Was it A, the Battle of the Alamo, B, the Battle of San Jacinto, C, the Battle of Goliad, or D, all of the above? The answer after the break. The inaugural Battle of Flowers Parade was put on to honor which event in Texas history? The answer is D, all of the above. I got that one wrong. It was all the battles. Okay. A lot of people thought it was the Battle of Flowers, and then it was San Jacinto, and then it was like, no, it's all of them. Okay. So there, there you go. So. The yeah. more you know. The more you know. There you go. We learn something every day. <laughs> That's a good thing. Uh, by the way, that fire we just showed you before the break, they've, they've got it out. But uh, as I said, it's still going to cause some issues there on 410 and Ingram. Let's talk two points, because if you've stepped outside today, you know that the air is thick. We've got a lot of humidity out there, and it's uh, going to create some heat indices today. I hate talking about those, but we're at that time of year. Now, what I can tell you is by tomorrow, frontal boundary will try to ease through. That'll knock down dew points a little bit, but they build back on Saturday. That's when our next best chance of rain is. And then after that, humidity falls off. So as we get into Sunday and Monday, we've got dew points in the 50s. Pleasant, if not dry. That's what we have to look forward to. But before we get there, uh, the air is going to be sticky. Still overcast out at the airport. Temperatures right now at 80 degrees 84 in new Braunfels, 83 seguin still some 70s for bernie and Kerrville, where the clouds are even thicker and we've got south southeast chilly winds for most of us which continues to usher in that very humid gulf moist air uh, as we look at the satellite picture so our cloud deck has kind of set up here from Kerrville, uvalde hondo northwest san antonio and then as you go east you hit the sun so we've got sun shining now on the east side of San Antonio, east side of Bear County. New Braunfels, you're starting to see some sun. Seguin, sun is out. Gonzalez, same story. And it does have an effect on the temperatures. 84 in Gonzalez, 85 Kennedy, 85 in Pleasanton. All places that are seeing sun at this hour. Under the clouds, it's 77 in Kerrville, 79 in Hondo. And even in Bear County alone, where we are seeing sun, it's 84 Randolph. Cloudy and hello to 77 there. So yeah, it's, these temperatures are always cloud dependent, but I still think we make it up to near 90 today uh, once uh, some of these clouds clear out. And yes, we do have a small chance of some storms this evening, but as we've been saying, a lot of this is going to be off to our west and northwest into the hill country. Our risk for storms here in San Antonio uh, would be A, very late, and B, I think the risk is just generally low. Uh, as we get into the midnight hour, still a 10% chance of rain, and there could be some drizzle as we get into uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, the severe weather risk stretches from Little Rock, Tyler, Waco, down to Kerrville. That's where the highest risk is. Now, this lighter orange or yellow color, I should say, is the isolated risk. There's, there's still a small chance here, but I think the hill country is where we're going to pay attention to uh, this afternoon. Hail and gusty winds, should we see a severe storm pop up? Those would be the main threats. And let me show you, geographically speaking, where I think we're going to get some of this to develop. So we got a dry line that'll set up out west. So Eagle Pass up to Uvalde, Lakey, that's an area to watch. And then along the front up here, north of Kerrville up to Fredericksburg, is where we could see some of those storms. But notice they all stay north and west of San Antonio. Then that front tries to drop south by tomorrow. Doesn't do a whole lot for us tomorrow, but we still could see a few isolated showers or storms. It's Saturday with this front pulling up stationary. Some energy coming in from the west that our rain chances start to go up, especially Saturday night. That's when we could see some pockets of heavy rain as well before this all clears out Sunday morning. 
Uh, so the weekend rain chances, 20% chance Friday evening, 20% chance Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, we bump it up to 60%. Saturday night, we bump it up to 70%. And then by Sunday morning, we take the rain chances away. And as we said, we're probably talking about half an inch to an inch, maybe a little bit more in the hill country, depending on where some of these heavier storms set up. 80 tomorrow, so a little bit of a cool down, 77 Saturday, and even cooler yet on Sunday behind that front, 69. We'll get lower humidity by Sunday afternoon, and Monday will be a beautiful day, 76, partly cloudy. And then by the middle part of next week, we start to add back in some more rain chances. Guys. Thank you, Justin. A quick trip to the bigs for a local pitcher and complete domination on the softball diamond. Coming up. Some times you heard the phrase next man up. Well, we're hearing it again. This time the San Antonio Brahmas are using it since they lost starting quarterback Garbers. He is out for the well, at least six weeks, maybe the rest of the season. Injured his wrist in the last game, and that means former Bernie Greyhound quarterback Quentin Dormady steps in to the starting role this Saturday when they host the Michigan Panthers. He was bummed out he didn't win the starting job over the summer, but or over the winter, but now his long road and hard work are about to pay off. Been an up and down journey for me. Um, super excited to, to get this opportunity. Um, circumstances obviously aren't great um, as far as someone having to get hurt, but um, I'm excited about it. The team's excited about it. Um, we're ready to, to get back um, in the Alamo Dome in front of our fans and uh, come out with a win. I'm, I'm excited to get back down to that area, um, play in front of fans that I'm familiar with, and I hope to see um, some Bernie fans out, out in the stands. All right, so since their two moved to number one, they needed to sign somebody, and they did. Kevin Hogan to replace Garbers. The 2-1 Brahmas will host 2-1 Michigan Saturday night at 6 o'clock in the Dome. Big league debut. Hey, it was a quick trip for the big leagues for Houston Astro pitcher Forrest Whitley. He was optioned back to AAA Sugarland yesterday. He was called up to help out the, dis, 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 the absolutely destroyed pitching staff. He made his big league debut Tuesday night against the Braves. He gave up that double when he entered in the top of the ninth with runners on second and third. Those runs were charged to Sean Durbin, so it didn't go against his ERA, but he did finish after two thirds of an inning. Only one hit, that double. Hopefully he gets called up back soon so he can show something a little bit more than just that one effort right there. Hey, Texas Lutheran softball team has put together another successful season. They are 23 and two. They're on a 15 game winning streak. Our Nick Mantis went to practice to learn more about the Bulldog squad. <laughs> A program that's only lost four conference games since its 2019 Division III National Championship knows how to stay consistent. But what's led to this year's success? We have a lot more players this year, so a lot more depth. Um, we have a lot of good pitching in the circle this year for us, and we have a lot of different defenders. If I'm not doing well, I know that five other pitchers have my back, and they can go in at any minute and do their job just as well as I could do it. We have a lot of expectations of one another and team expectations, and so being able to reach those expectations is one really big part in why we're so successful. I think it's an exciting brand of softball. Uh, we, we enjoy it, and it's fast and we keep you on your toes and it's all gas, no brakes. While this team is locked in on staying successful this season, they're also enjoying their time here at practice by keeping the atmosphere fun. They're bumping music, they're talking a little trash. It's almost like they want it to feel like one big party. We say that we do bulldog parties. Every day is a party when you're with these girls. It's so fun. Everyone, we're all super, super close, and it's just fun being out here. I just think it's so electric, and it just gives us that certain vibe, as in, like, we're in it together. We're having this party together, and we're all in it. Everybody's here as a whole, and so we're fighting for each other. We're loving each other, and uh, we're just kind of doing it all as one big party. So it's really what it is. In Seguin, Nick Mantis, KSAT 12 Sports. All right, hopefully they can keep it going. Tomorrow night is Texas Lutheran taking on Trinity and Seguin. That game set for 6 o'clock. All right, let's head over to SA Lines and see what else Fiona's put in that special Fiesta case. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait, do you see we got one yeah. coming up here in a second? But first of all, it's look, time to fiestify yourselves. Look at your beautiful flower crown. Yes, and I have Gina Jaramillo, designer and owner of Happy Chick Beauty Designs, to thank hi, for hi, this. Thank you for having this me. This lights back. up. This yes. is so cool. You have to be extra for Fiesta. <laughs> Any kind of flower crown you need, but also if you want the ultimate yeah. cascarones, look at this. Yeah. 
This Bougie is... cascarones. Okay, and when you did that, you said you noticed sales just jump, right? That's actually how my business started. Wow! Yes, yes, Plus, we're going to tell you I can win a free pair of earrings coming up. All right, time to do a medal giveaway, and Jen is out about. Hey, Jen. That's right, we are ready for another medal giveaway. I can't tell you where we're at. Wait, are y'all ready? Yeah. Yes, they are. So the giveaway's not happening yet. We're going to do a raffle real quick right now to give something away. Oh, 108. 108. There we go. Hey, look what she wins. That's a hint where we're at right here. Okay, you got to tune in. Ready? A big Viva Fiesta. Ready? One, two, three. Viva Fiesta. Back to you guys. Of course, a social mm -hmm. question is, what's in your survival bag? I think for Jen, it was that megaphone. Okay, but what the most important thing, your survival kit, look who we have here, Gabby yep. Gonzalez. Yes, the Mary Poppins bag of survival kits. We're gonna see what's in there coming up.